session. It's about Joomla and cloud cloud management. And um, yeah, I would like to start now. Um, first of all, why are we talking about cloud and uh, especially cloud management? Because um, nowadays everything is um, um, and yeah, nowadays everything is uh, moving on the cloud and uh, the last two years we have seen a lot of um, new trends that uh, deals about um, hosting stuff on the cloud and so that's why we want to talk about uh, how we can uh, use Joomla and the cloud. Okay. Um, so first of all the market growth that's uh, interesting I've read that on uh, CZ uh, net.com blog it's uh, telling us that every year the cloud economy itself like everything that has something to do with uh, cloud technology is growing at least 20% so for the next uh, 10 years and uh, if you yeah, can believe these numbers means um, that uh, it will be a huge number in 2020 that so uh, generates anything that uh, comes from cloud computing so that's just the market. And now let's see um, what is actually cloud computing. I mean, it's uh, a very broad, I would say, a definition. And uh, you can generally say you are using, or the concept is uh, using some um, storage or uh, computing power, processing power, and bandwidth via the internet. And uh, everything is centralized. And uh, you only pay for uh, what you use, or even it's free. It depends. So it, it's not a you have you don't have to invest in a hardware or anything, and then you can use it. But uh, you can use it on the fly. So that's that's the main concept, and that's why it's uh, it's growing. So this quickly uh, this is the um, estimated yeah, growth for um, cloud computing. And um, this is coming from uh, Forrester Research. And uh, as you see, there are some different um, areas that, uh, that uh, covers cloud computing. Um, I will go into detail about what these uh, um, yeah, acronym, acronyms mean. So in general, we see it's like a huge growth. Okay, so in um, uh, cloud computing, we have several areas, and uh, I want to go into the three main areas. That's um, that's the first thing is uh, software as a service. That's one part, and uh, on this side is platform as a service, and um, on the right side it's uh, infrastructure as a service. Okay, what does it actually mean? Um, software as a service means you you have an application that is uh, hosted on the internet, and uh, you can you can use it, and uh, yeah, and you don't need to really install it or do anything with that. It's uh, updated automatically, and um, you only pay uh, yeah as as you really need it. And similar is actually the platform um, model. Um, as you see here, there are some um, big players here. For example, Google has uh, Google App Engines, and uh, they, for example, have, um, they provide a library of um, different, I would say, uh, widgets or um, a framework, and you can use it and then uh, create your own apps and then host it directly on uh, Google. And um, you can use it then on the internet. So instead of um, having to download and do all the, I would say, traditional stuff. Um, Facebook has a Facebook developer, which provides you a platform as well for um, yeah, developing your own apps and then integrate into the Facebook system. Windows has a very big uh, um, yeah, platform as well. Maybe it's not very um, well known, but uh, yeah, Windows Azure is a very, very big investment. 
uh, by Microsoft. Okay, then uh, we have some infrastructure as a service. That means that you really, um, yeah, that you just rent infrastructure and uh, storage or something like that. And yeah, and then um, you just can uh, use it via the internet. So there's no need to uh, actually invest in hardware as such. Um, okay. So, um, software as a service is um, like, uh, for example, we all know uh, we all know Google Docs and uh, Google Translation, and um, this is, uh, for example, one very um, famous example that we all use every day, and uh, that makes, for example, Google very popular. And uh, compared to the Microsoft uh, Docs version, for example, you can collaborate, you can share, you can do everything via the internet. So that's only about the concept. And um, one of the pioneers, I would say, in uh, software as a service is uh, Salesforce. It's a CRM. And uh, they, uh, their slogan is actually end of traditional software, so that uh, you don't need to download and pay for licenses and upgrades or anything like that. They just uh, have it online. So you can assess everything online, and everything is uh, saved online. And so, yeah. Similarly to the two above is uh, Zoho and uh, Basecamp. Maybe you know Basecamp. It's a very, very uh, useful tool, and uh, it's it has been booming in like the last three or four years. And so this is the software as a service model for cloud computing. Um, yeah, the platform as a service is, uh, as I already said. These are the known um, players here. Um, yeah, ha had anybody of you already created any apps for, uh, in Facebook, for example? Yeah. So this is uh, kind of uh, the area that will come more and more now. Every big, um, big, uh, I would say, uh, company will have their own uh, application framework, or they they create um, APIs and then you can somehow work together with the, their uh, structure, their <coughs> system. And uh, this is very useful, actually. OK. Um, this is um, yeah the infrastructure as a service. Uh, the biggest player is Amazon Web Service, I would say. And um, they have several um, applications that help you to deploy um, your, yeah, your web, your applications online. And uh, yeah, these are EC2, S3, and uh, CloudFront. That um, <coughs> for the storage, you uh, can use S3, for example, and then just um, store your files online and uh, instead of uh, maybe on your own server. And um, EC2 is uh, um, yeah, it's a it's a software that helps you to um, configure your web software stack. For example, if you want to run a website that uh, needs LAMP stack, then you just uh, go into their uh, library and then you just um, click, a, it's called an image, and then yeah, you just launch your stack. And then on top of your, uh, the stack, you can create your uh, Joomla site, for example. So that's what we actually did already. Um, then there are like some other storage type of um, services. That's, for example, the Google Storage or Flickr for images. Everybody can, for example, yeah, use Flickr, and then instead of um, yeah having your your own host or server, you just put everything on image, uh, everything on uh, on the cloud. And the same as YouTube and uh, Dropbox. Maybe most of you know it already. Um, and there are some, uh, and uh, besides Amazon, there's a uh, Rackspace, who is very, uh, very strong in cloud hosting as well. Um, now I want to talk more about like our own situation. That is maybe more interesting, because uh, we run our website. Um, on Joomla mainly, but not only. And uh, 
now that we get sort of a uh, quite strong uh, traffic that um, yeah that uh, leads us to find solution that is um, yeah goes beyond the traditional way and um, so daily we get 15 to 24k um, visitors um, throughout all our um, subdomains or subsites and uh, we have very uh, irregular traffic spikes means for example in the weekend it's maybe very low and uh, uh, during the during the week it could be very high and uh, when we run campaigns that for example um, you get a sale sale campaign or something then it's uh, yeah it's very very high for example um, yeah and we add more and more functionality to our website or we, we launch other web uh, apps that uh, integrates into our site so it's getting more and more complex and um, yeah more difficult to maintain so and the other thing is uh, the situation is now that we need much much more computing power the more people are coming the more uh, web apps are integrating with each other and communicating with each other you will then yeah, logically need more uh, power yeah. and um, <coughs> Then, as the system grows and as it, uh, the complexity grows, we will need something that is more stable, and um, which means like it's it's more um, available and uh, the performance and it's uh, smoother, it's faster, and uh, of course demand for security as well means um, not only like hacking uh, protection but also just simple backup. So yeah, so all these um, yeah development I would say is uh, resulting in a higher cost for us for hosting, maintaining, and um, yeah we need like more server uh, admin um, work, and uh, it's not getting easier then. <coughs> so um, summarize we could say that uh, that if if you need more computing resources normally you just add some servers and uh, yeah n uh, that means that some admin uh, or server admin has to yeah deploy some uh, server into the existing system and uh, that's uh, it's actually not that easy to do and um, whereas like, on the other side if you have the cloud uh, hosting then it's uh, actually automatically you just need to click a button and say okay I need some more um, yeah, server and more power then uh, yeah, it will it will expand and, um, and another th uh, factor is that the time to to get a server up and running and to configure it as exactly as you want could take some time it's uh, not not even yeah, very quick and um, yeah, on the cloud computing side, you have um, software that uh, that can, for example, copy exactly the preset that you already use, and then uh, you just add it, and it's actually within minutes. So it's uh, very, very uh, handy. And um, yeah, the other thing is uh, you you need several people that uh, deal actually with uh, the server, with the hosting, with um, software that that everything works uh, well and um, whereas if you use the cloud service then you don't need to care about that like not really but uh, there's only one I would say like um, guy who is expert in that and then uh, he takes care for that for example and um, the service provider takes care for the for the rest so everything runs well and um, you don't need to really invest a lot in uh, upfront um, if you want to uh, increase your site's capabilities, uh, whereas in um, the cloud computing, um, you just uh, yeah you only pay uh, yeah as much as you really use. So you don't need to, for example, if you want to double the size of your uh, whole server system, then you need to uh, pay a lot for a new server and this kind of stuff. It's not uh, needed anymore. And um, so, right now, 
the situation is the users uh, assess our website and um, we um, try to balance the, 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 the power, the storage, the data flow, everything within, um, yeah, on the, on the cloud. Instead of, uh, in earlier times, we have to, um, we have to, yeah, invest in the, in the hardware itself. So it means if, we have to be prepared for the peak times always, but we only use it, let's say, 10% of the time. And uh, that make it, makes it not very uh, economical. Whereas now we balance, you know, the usage really uh, as it occurs, um, and uh, it's much much better. Okay, this is. Uh, I just want to tell the, or explain the concept. Um, if more users are coming to the site, then uh, we will need more servers, and uh, we use, uh, among others, EC2 to. Um, to auto scale server capabilities and um, yeah the the database as well is hosted uh, on the cloud and um, yeah there's a tool that uh, we use for for example deploying um, yeah demo demo sites on the cloud means uh, Every time a user comes to our site and want to, wants to install a demo just to see how it works, um, the system, I would say the whole cloud system, will automatically, automatically um, increase the, the number of servers, database, everything needed uh, just to, um, to take care for that automatically. So we don't need to really take care for that anymore. And. Uh, in general, it's it's uh, also cheaper just to do it. Just okay. So, well, in this case, what what is uh, what should we do to to reduce cost com from the traditional to the uh, com to the um, um, cloud computing transition? Um, first of all, it's very easy to understand that you can store all your Static files on the cloud, so every image or every video or every everything that is uh, rather static, you should um, find a yeah a, a host on the cloud and uh, <coughs> just put it there, uh, which is um, always better for for uh, yeah to save um, storage I would say um, resources then. If you want to have it uh, distributed faster to the users, then uh, you probably want to use uh, CDN. CDN means, uh, I think, Content Distribution Network. Um, means, like, for example, if a user in, um, yeah, in America uh, comes to our website and then they uh, yeah, uh, assess uh, an image or something, it will be um, accessible for him. Um, via the, the um, via Amazon service uh, from the nearest location uh, that this image is um, stored, and on the other side, if a Asian user would come to the same site to the same image, it will be uh, served from I don't know, for example, Bangkok or something. Um, so this is very very handy, and um, for example, every video, everything uh, that that you have, you already host it on YouTube, for example. So you, you, this is the concept uh, 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 that I want to yeah, explain. So every big file, every static files are put on the cloud and use a certain type of CDN so that um, users can access it very fast. Um, yeah, the database is hosted on the cloud as well, but it, it's not necessary. Uh, needed, but uh, yeah, you can do it. And uh, very important is that you have a form of auto scaling. It's uh, maybe the most important actually aspect in the uh, if you do the <coughs> cloud um, computing. And um, without that, it doesn't make actually much sense because uh, yeah, if the traffic grows and everything, and there has to be somebody who monitors it, it's uh, it's not gonna work. So everything is um, automatically monitored. And then um, 
to auto backup every uh, every yeah, data on the website is also very important and uh, yeah we do it on the cloud as well um, actually we wanted to show you some uh, um, some uh, components that uh, we have developed uh, we have internally developed these uh, components to actually serve the um, yeah all the, the requirements that we have above but uh, unfortunately I think the, the demo is not yeah uh, afterwards we might uh, try to, to uh, assess the website and then um, show you how, how it how it can work Okay. Um, yeah. So, what what might be the usages uh, for Joomla users? Um, uh, first of all, you could always actually start thinking in the concept that um, hosting on a cloud is actually like it's nothing special, nothing new, but it's uh, it's more e economical because. Um, the more people are using the cloud, the cheaper the the cost for for the supplier. It's just uh, um, yeah, it's just uh, the economy of, uh, of of big numbers. So uh, makes sense. So you could, for example, start a um, site or a blog or anything directly on the cloud, for example. As uh, for example, WordPress.com is actually one one of the yeah, very famous. Um, um, example, and uh, but more interestingly, maybe for uh, rather higher traffic sites, it would be um, not only interesting but maybe also a requirement to be competitive. Um, for example, if you if we for example do uh, deploy demo sites, and uh, it's very popular because everybody wants to just. Um, install some demo site and just see how everything works uh, and it's for free so we expect that it's uh, it could be very high traffic and it is that's why um, it is really needed to do that and uh, otherwise the cost for maintaining the the, the servers and everything it's uh, it's very it could be high um, if you have for example a, a software that uh, that helps you to build a website automatically um, for Joomla, um, and um, yeah, th you can host it on the web, and people can use it, for example, and then export or import, migrate into their own site, and uh, yeah, that's for example one example. Another would be more solutions, I would say, that could base on Joomla uh, CMS. For example, if you have like a job board website that uh, or software. And um, <coughs> you can host it directly on the web, so your um, um, yeah people access this website and just use it as it is uh, yeah. And um, other things would could be like classifieds or um, project management tools, similarly to uh, Basecamp. If you understand the workflow and everything, you could uh, start with a Joomla. Um, framework to build your web applications and and just uh, start right away online and for example you have a uh, subscription based uh, model and uh, people <coughs> um, are allowed to use maybe like 10 items for free and then everything else is uh, $9 per month for example that's a very popular way to to do it Um, yeah, so the, the takeaway is that um, using the cloud, you, you, have a, um, you have software or you have a platform or any computing resources that uh, you can um, assess via the internet and uh, on demand. So it's uh, flexible how, how much you, you need to really use it. Um, you don't need to invest in any hardware or uh, software packages or licenses um, you just need to pay for the service itself 
Um, there's no maintenance cost for you on the, on the infrastructure side or on the hardware side. Um, so you can actually start uh, very lean. Any business ideas that you have, you can uh, yeah, develop fast. Um, no download for software upgrades, that's uh, similar to the maintenance. And um, yeah, you only pay for uh, usage that could be me, uh, could be subscription based or volume volume based. And um, yeah, that's about it. And uh, if you understand the concept, you actually can um, yeah, right away start using the um, cloud infrastructure and uh, at least host, for example, static uh, static images on the on the cloud to save um, storage costs or yeah make other usages of the of the web um, cloud okay thank you very much um, yeah how's the uh, questions and are welcome if you have any questions for Coming to this one, um, I think the the database is, um, is it's not about it's not very uh, like something that is needs scaling a lot and uh, it's rather um, it's rather like a fixed sort of thing and um, I think this is uh, like our um, admin server is um, yeah choosing it over the EC2 and. Um, I think the the reason is because of the EC2 is uh, more for for the whole stack, so it's it's not not just for the database, and this is uh, only for the or especially for the database. So that's how I understand the system. Do you know about the RDS? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> uh, have you uh, got the answers? Yeah. Okay. Um, because. Sorry. Yes, um, using this extension, you yeah. can do it. Okay. 
Yeah, sorry, uh, but I'm running out of battery here, and so we don't have much time to do more. So, sorry, we can come back later. So, uh, what I have seen is that, uh, as you can see here, uh, we use Google Storage, you know, like to, to host this banner. So, as you can see, it's not coming from Joomla anymore, it's coming from Google APIs. So, by using this curve, uh, method that you can put everything, static image, static file, on the clouds. In, a, uh, in the power of the Google server, so you don't have to worry about, you know, like traffic or you know, high traffic anymore. I'm sorry. Uh, so, basically, we have the components. Uh, excuse me, anyone have a Sony adapter here? Sorry, no, it's fine. <laughs> So that is the basic idea of the component that we have been developed, like uh, Amazon S3, Google Storage. So it helps you to put everything that you don't want to put on that server on Google's server or Amazon S3 server. So it's, I think that the, the idea is clear that you, you don't have to worry about your server anymore. You know, all of the file, almost all of the file are put on their server. So you have to, that's some, some uh, if your website is not uh, a dynamic website, if everything is static and you can put on the server or as a one copy, then, then you move everything to Google. So that is the idea. Anyone of you here uh, has the file on Amazon or, or on Google already? Okay. okay, that's one, right? Two. <laughs> so uh, normally you will put your file on the server, right? So I think that uh, it's time that we can put 90% uh, um, of Joomla file and uh, of those Joomla site on the Google. So that is uh, what we have been um, working on. and. Uh, about Goggles, currently there are only uh, an application that called Google Story, but it's still in deal preview, so it's not published. It's still in the kind of pre-beta phase, so it's by invitation only. So that's if you want to use Google Story, you can just uh, enter the emails into the event invitation list and wait for the approval. But for Amazon Ad3, you can you know. Uh, very, it takes you about five minutes to sign up, get uh, a credit account with uh, some uh, credit card information, and then that's done. So, what we have done here, if you access Zoomlat website now, you will see that most of the thing that we put on Zoomlat now is not, it's not from Zoomlat server anymore. It's pay as you go plan a EC2. So, because we are having, as you can see on the demo side, the templates, uh, demo server, that you can see that we have a button that we can create a demo server it instantly. That's, it takes about maybe five, five seconds or ten seconds. You, you can try it now. If you go to any template, you can have an instant demo server, clicks and install. After five seconds, you have an exactly side that we have on our demo. You can access to the administration, you can uh, see the configuration, you can test everything, you can e even install your own components so to see how it fits your need first. That is what we call play before you go. So we can see uh, uh, whether it's, uh, you, uh, what you need uh, for the site, is it a good template. You can almost accept everything. And the website after seven days it, it will, be, uh, will be deleted. So how we can cope with the traffic that there are thousands of people who come to the demo site and they keep, keep installing things. So for traditional website, it's very hard for, for us to maintain such a website because it will be very costly for traffic and we need a high resort of server. But because we have put 80% up to 90% of everything on Rogo, so Rogo is uh, Rogo server never dies. So the same as our website. So, is there any questions? Uh, questions. Yeah. Uh, what percentage uh, decreasing in cost did you did you have? Uh, and also, 
what, how did you migrate the risk, manage the risk of moving from a traditional service to an online service? Honestly, uh, for a single website, for some small website, I think it's, it's more expensive. Um, what, from our own experience, we pay around s more than $1,500 per month for hosting, including uh, about five dedicated servers for everything. We put this thing on you know, the main side on one server, forum on one server, that sort of thing. But when we move to Amazon S3, uh, Amazon EC2, we pay around 2500 honestly. But uh, we don't have a server crash, and we, we are expecting that we are going to be, uh, grow so that we can, we can uh, because also we, we do some, a lot of testing as well. So in fact, our demand has been uh, increased. But in the long run, maybe when we have more traffic, then I do see that it will be dropped. Anyway, it's a price. It's not the question here. The price is that you can have another option like uh, a RedSpace Cloud. You can have other platform. Every cloud has the similar things. So it can be expensive for Amazon it's, uh, EC2, but it can be very cheap for Google Storage. Uh, we pay about five, five dollars for Google Storage on the Joomla side. Five dollars per month for that story things. Five static files on, on Joomla side, the main side. Yes, sir? Uh, actually, uh, yes, um, the storage is that's a, a very basic uh, things for clouds. But if when uh, we are creating uh, infrastructures of uh, LAM, of web server, of everything, so that we can decrease and increase the number of server, as you can see here, when on demand, it means that. I can run five server, five instance of Amazon, it's, uh, Amazon EC2 at the high traffic time, like maybe in the day, but I run two server, two, uh, two set of server, that's uh, in the night when the traffic is not high. So that's the point. When you say server, is that like an entire Linux installation? Or mm. only like a web space part? Uh, it has many cloud server, uh, database servers, and uh, five server, so it is a shared server. So in this infrastructure, we need at least three server that we are having on Joomla. We need three server, and some server that store it first were still the same. We don't increase the instance of the server. Uh, Amazon call it instance. So, but for the web, the, for the Apache, for the LAM, we can have two server. So if you ping, if you ping Joomla side at different time of the day, you will see it coming from different IP. Yes, sir. How are, how are you doing your backups? <laughs> backups? What do you mean by backups? You, guys, you, you said you're doing a, you know, a cloud backup. Um, you know, are you just using an rsync to simple storage, or how are you managing your backup in the cloud? Yeah, interesting question. Um, <clears throat> in fact, what we are running using from cloud from Google or from Amazon is that that's a mirror. That mirror is the chain with the original server that we have on traditional side. So it is a, lot, uh, a copy of everything. So in case it, it's, uh, the, the, something happened to Google, something happened to EC2, Amazon have uh, some DAO server in the past few weeks. So we still have our own copy. So even if you can buy another instance that's for storage only or for backup only so you can you can set up a cron jobs a schedule task that okay i'm putting all everything on my side to a backup server every 12 hour or every uh, 28 hours something like that so is your backup in the cloud or is it yes we can backup in the cloud 
you can set up a cron job, a scary task to do it automatically. Do you back up on the same instance or a different instance? Um, normally, it's we, you can decide on that because um, Amazon or Google they have a driven uh, what do you call it? server farm in US, in Japan, in Singapore. So we can decide where to to to, to buy the instance. Which area? If you are in US, you should buy. You know, more customer in here, you should buy instant in US. It have a faster loading time. So uh, it's not about the money. It's not about everything. But also, it's about the speed. You can expect that speed of cloud uh, computing is increasing every day. So everything we, as you can see, everything is moving on the cloud. So the service is improved. So. Maybe you had, uh, we have done it past, uh, uh, last year, but it's, it's not very you know, like effective because it's still low. But now, Amazon has been increasing. There are server farms everywhere, so everything is faster. Yes, sir? Uh, okay. You mentioned a lot of uh, advantages, but did you encounter any disadvantages of hosting cloud? It's a little bit uh, cost to have this kind of thing set up. Uh, we contact with Amazon's guy, uh, and it's, uh, we have a, uh, some, a lot of company. They provide cloud management. It costs at least about three thousand to set up these kind of things. Maybe the price will be decreased when there are more providers get into the field. But you know, like that is the, the biggest. In the earlier slide, you said it was worth four dollars. And in the cloud, only one dollar sign. That is the, the, uh, the, the, the fee that we pay for the cloud provider, but I'm talking about the cloud management and cloud deployment service. So, okay, anyway, this is one off. I mean, like, you don't have to pay it monthly, you have to pay it once. So that is, I think that is the biggest problem for us. Is this a managed, so there's the unmanaged solution where you're So in your case, uh, do you have an admin that actually you probably have, like a, a Linux admin or someone who does take care of the managed of managing the all, all this infrastructure, right? Amazon itself doesn't do managed services. No, no, they don't do. So the, I think the, the question. So there is saving in the uh, infrastructure cost, in the hardware and deployment, but there's a, but it's offset at least at some scale. It's offset for, by having to either hire out for managed services or you know, the company that you mentioned that would set up all these things. So I think it it's probably has to do with, uh, uh, there's a tipping point mm. yeah, yeah. between the, you know, the scale, you know, the, the saving costs on the infrastructure being offset by, by the managed services costs. Um, are usually the expensive part. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, about so the, it's about the knowledge. I would say initial yeah. knowledge cost. That yeah, it's to new term. It's not about the, the most expensive part. Is yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You got a VPS. If, if it's if you manage it, then it's dirt cheap. If there's managed hosting, exactly. then, then right away. I mean, away like it's now that we have, uh, for example, the last six months something uh, uh, fine tune our system, and sooner or later we find exactly what we need uh, without the help of uh, any experts and uh, you know pay the management cost for them, then it's. It's going to be real cheap, as you said. But if there's a but problem, you need to turn around to someone else to. Yeah, for example. To help again. Yeah. Um, personally, I think that we, you can help many level of clouds. Let's start with the very sim you know, very easy th step that is CDN. Put file on Google. That's all. So this is something that uh, already very complicated and. Uh, Anyway, so it's costly, so it's easy to understand. But what I see now from, if you can imagine, zoom lot side, zoom lot main side, is a qu quite a high traffic side, and I'm paying about five dollar per month for image, static files, cache as well, cache as well. So that that is acceptable. 
So a question on the CDN deployment. Uh, so yours is kind of the advanced, you know, the fully uh, uh, cloud, you know, the, the infrastructure is in the cloud. Yeah. For most of us, I guess, the CDN is probably the, yeah. the, is more cost effective. Uh, the question on the CDN is I have, and one of the reasons why I, I, I've not myself kind of made the move there is that with Joomla, because Joomla doesn't have an in-context preview, uh, you know, we kind of teach our customers to uh, set up an article as, you know, uh, you know special or, you know, log in, and the way that they can actually preview the, the, the item inside yeah. their site is by, you know, behind the scenes doing it in preview yeah. context. Now, the problem is once you have a CDN in place, and, uh, and, and images and things like that get you know distributed worldwide. Mm. Uh, yeah. There's a lack of time, right? Uh, yeah, I, I got the point. I got the point. How in fact, you, you don't have to do anything else. You just one time setup, and everything work like the way you worked before. Because as I said, it's just a mirrors. You know, your file is still there. You know, the original file is still there, and people, your people are still working on the same things. Uh, the part, the location of the file, it is still there. Um, maybe, maybe you ha have to use the relative part. Don't use exclusive part. So everything is the same. When you store in the component, that Google store it or Amazon S3, that's one time you set up the configuration. What file you need to be updated on Google or on Amazon, and that's done. And frequency of the updating, maybe three minutes, or maybe every two minutes, every uh, twelve hour, every two days, then that's done. So everything is the same. You, you can set up a lot of time. Let's say, my, you know, someone, if a content creator takes, you know, uh, let's say. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, exactly. I have a setup of cache. The cache updated to Amazon every five minutes. Okay. But the, you know, the logo, never. I, we can say that it, on demand. Uh, I can configure it uh, because it belongs to different folders. Logo in, is, is uh, located at another folder, but the case folder, the case file is located in the case folder. So the case folder is updated every five minutes on mini demand. So that is also the evidence thing. Uh, so the yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm having, I'm going to start the project. It's a ter eight terabytes project of videos. And we're thinking of putting the videos on the clouds mm -hmm. on a CDN. Yeah, Not so, yeah, so um, yeah, you can put the video photo in uh, image yeah. slash videos. And uh, because video, you should not update in every minute, right? So you should update it whenever you have a new file. But my problem on this project is I need to upload the videos from here to the cloud. Yeah. And it's like... It's still a big problem. It's, not the, it's, a problem. it's very cost efficient having 8 terras on the cloud and even, for example, I have 2 terras per week. Yeah, I got it. Mm. But that is the problem. Of, yeah. That is because uh, if, you, if you put that for video manually or automatically, it costs the same, right? So it's not a problem. It's not a problem. But yeah, uh, the yeah, but the bandwidth problem. And so it's, uh, it's, but it's coming down now. When more players are getting into the field, we have. Uh, last, maybe the, um, uh, two years ago, we have only Amazon. But later on, we have a right page cloud, even now very traditional company software, a company, host com uh, hosting company like ShopLayer, they do have a layer clouds. So everything is cloud. So price is going down. Yeah. So the, the problem is, I think it's understandable. And you know, you have to make sure, it's not a problem of your eight gigabyte, but you have to make sure that your eight gigabyte video can earn your, you enough money to use this cloud. Yeah. yeah. I think there are some services that, yeah. that uh, heard about that. You can send a hard drive, right? Because Any more last question? Yeah. Yeah. With, you know, yeah. 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 To, to push two terabytes or eight terabytes every week, there are services where you can send a hard drive. They'll actually, they're, they're connected. But the, the idea of this business is I put the content before of you. So the bandwidth here is the main, the main problem. Yeah. I have problems with the eight terabytes on the cloud. I think that's yeah, that's, that's the idea, yeah, yeah. but the, yeah, exactly. the bandwidth 
to upload. Yeah. That's the cost. The Do you want to just to host it or save it on the cloud, or will you use it then? Like just uh, once it's in the cloud, it can stay forever. That, that's why so it's like on YouTube. For cloud, I think for cloud, they, they charge for uh, in and out requests. So upload or you know people pulling it from their server. Uh, the same is not uh, it's not because uh, it's it's not expenses because you upload it, but also it's expensive because of the number of the requests exactly. to the to the file. To the file. Yeah, the time. yeah, the same time. So. But you, that also depends on the video processing, right? Uh, because the video when grows, it's a running process. It's a running process. Okay, so if there are no more questions, so uh, thank you for coming today. So. <laughs>